So if we offer our love and service to God spontaneously, uh, then he also offers his love and service to us. I mean, he's already maintaining every living entity in the universe. Uh, he does that automatically, just out of affection for all his spiritual children. So the least we could do is to take the gifts that God offers to us and offer them back to him. It's not that he needs these things. He's the source of everything, and he could create another creation or 10 or 100 or a million more creations, just like the one we've got already, without being diminished in any way. So it's not the material things that we offer to God that he enjoys. It's the love that we offer them with. Uh, so if we offer them out of love, not out of a, a sense of having to follow some rules or out of a sense of guilt that, oh, I'm taking so much from you, now I have to give back. Uh, but out of a sense of love that, oh God, you've been taking care of me for many, many lives and I've been ignoring you, I've been neglecting you. Uh, so at least I can return your friendship, return your service to me by giving some service back to you. I mean, that's only natural, that's only right only fair that we should do so. But more than that, we should offer our hearts in love to God. Because we all crave love and to be loved. Yet in this material world, as I pointed out earlier, there really isn't any fitting object of love. Uh, everyone that we love is going to disappoint us in this world. But if we love God, His reciprocation is going to satisfy our hearts. Because first of all, he's the only one who really knows what will satisfy our hearts. Uh, the particular flavor of love, the particular variety uh, or taste of love that we enjoy. He alone can know that because he alone can see within our hearts. Nobody else can. If I say, uh, what, what number and color am I thinking of right now? Nobody can tell me. Huh? They can't see within my heart. But God certainly knows. He knows everything. Because he's present everywhere. He is infinite consciousness. Infinite knowledge. So he knows everything already. He knows everything that's going to happen in the future too. So he makes a plan that will accommodate all of that. And the plan is called service to God. Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga means everything that I normally do for my own pleasure or for my own maintenance or for my own well-being, uh, before I take the results of that work, I offer them to God. It's very simple. And we've made several videos now on how to offer food to God, how to do different mantras and how to do different uh, ceremonies and stuff like that. Uh, this information is readily available in the books of our spiritual master, which you can download and read uh, from our site. Uh, so I don't really need to explain the whole process in detail. What I'm trying to get at here is the principle. The principle is we should offer the results of our work to God, as well as the actual work itself. Then our work will be a pleasure, not a burden, because we're doing it out of love. We have been living according to this principle now for many years, and we find it very wonderful. Uh, we look forward to getting up in the morning and doing our work, because our work is all pleasurable. It's pleasurable because it's based on love. If it wasn't based on love, then why even bother doing it? Huh? Why take the trouble? Because it's not going to give us pleasure. It's just a burdensome uh, trouble. So we don't need trouble. We don't exist for trouble. Though, so why do we take so many troublesome responsibilities in this world? Why do we uh, accept so many material commitments in this world? Uh, like buying a house, for example. Buying a house, you have to pay for 20 or 30 or 40 years. And if you miss a few payments, they take the whole thing away. 
It doesn't matter if there's only one payment left. Huh? They'll take everything. They're rascal bankers. What kind of a deal is that? That's like making a commitment to be in anxiety. I'm going to be in anxiety for 20 or 30 years because I have to make this big payment every month. What kind of nonsense is that? Huh? Or marriage. Somebody makes a commitment. I'm going to love you for the rest of my life. Whoa, who can do that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever been able to love us for their, for their whole life? Have we ever experienced that before? No. What happens is, I love you this week, and then you say something I don't like, and I don't love you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's love in this material world. Huh? It's nonsense. It's just the appearance of love. It's just the imitation of love. It's a bogus kind of love, counterfeit. Uh, but if we don't have anything else, or if we don't think we do, then maybe we'll accept that kind of love because we think that's the only thing I'm going to get. Well, it's not a very good deal. Anyway, you slice it, <laughs> it's uh, going to lead to disappointment. So that's the reality. The real love, the real work, the real pleasure in life comes from being in relationship with God. Because that relationship is permanent. That relationship is eternal. God is never going to give us, give up on us. His love, just like everything else about him, is eternal and perfect. That's the nature of God. So God is the real source of everything enjoyable. Krishna. Everything pleasurable, everything beautiful comes from God. And he has an unlimited supply. So when he says, uh, according to how they surrender to me, I reciprocate. That has a very deep meaning. That means in whatever way we approach God, in whatever way we want to serve God, in whatever way we want to love God, then he responds to us exactly in the appropriate way. How many times have you been in a conversation with somebody and you realized, oh, they don't understand what I just said at all? Uh, this happens to me a lot. <laughs> I'll be talking with someone and then they'll ask a question or they'll respond in such a way and I'll realize that, oh, no, uh, you know, they didn't get anything I said. They're still stuck in their previous conception, whatever it is. Uh, so... This is a problem. We, we have a, a conception of God, and that's stuck in our minds, a particular way of looking or thinking about God. But actually, God is beyond our conception, whatever it is. Uh, nobody can actually understand God because God is infinite and our minds are finite. So we may be able to understand one aspect or one particular pastime or one particular uh, expression of God but we can't understand God as a whole because he's simply beyond us uh, but when God expresses himself or reveals himself then we can understand that this is the real way to look at God and what does he say he says I am within everyone's hearts and I know what everyone is thinking and feeling. Uh, I know every living entity, but no one knows me. He says like that. So can you imagine how God feels when people say, they pretend, oh, I know God. Yeah, I'm a big preacher. Yeah, I get up in front of people in Madison Square Garden and I make all these big speeches and collect all this money. Uh, I have my own TV station, my own corporate jet. See how God loves me? Well, no, this guy doesn't understand God at all. This guy is using God to make a good living. Uh, but we're not trying to do that. We're trying to educate people. We don't want to come between you and God. We don't want to become the arbitrator in the relationship between you and God. 
We simply want to educate people how to approach God on their own, independently, spontaneously, to love God. And then God will reciprocate according to their manner and quality of approach to him. That's what God does. That's how he expresses himself in the scripture. He doesn't say, go to some religious organization and surrender and serve them. No. He says, sarva dharman prityaja. Give up all religion. Mam ekam sharanam praja. Surrender only unto me. And braja means do it. <laughs> no, Nike didn't invent that slogan. Krishna did. Just do it. Praja. Aham tvang sarva papebhyo moksha I will deliver you. 